Views and opinions expressed do not necessarily represent those of Access Fort Wayne, the Allen County Public Library, or any other supporting group. Get involved with Access Fort Wayne and make your own television programming. Call 421-1250 to find out more. Them that's got shall get. Them that's not shall lose. So the Bible says, and it's still good news. Mama may have, and Papa may have, but God bless the child who's got his own, who's got his own. fade empty pockets never make the grave hello and welcome to theater for ideas we have a special guest today dr Catherine reddy all the way from austin texas and uh gotten to know her in the past 24 hours and just okay. been a delight and uh, but she has an important message today uh, this is co-sponsored and brought to you by Three Rivers Art Center for Kids, Track, using the power of art to combat child abuse. And we were fortunate enough to get a grant from Cable Fund Access Board, thanks to our friends from Friends of Third World, who are tax exempt and serving as our fiscal agent, which allowed us to uh, bring Catherine to Fort Wayne. Now, as you saw in the newspaper article written by Ellie Bogue, and that was great, Obituary Starts Dialogue on Child Abuse, and that's our title. And this is how I came to know you. Yes. I read on the internet this, uh, it's been called a scathing obituary, written by Catherine with input from her brother Patrick uh, about their mother. Now, we all know that obituaries usually are dearly beloved, departed, uh, what a wonderful person, we're all going to miss her or him. But this is quite a bit different. So I'm going to start out with just the first paragraph. Okay. And then Catherine can fill in and talk about her growing up in foster care and her family. And then uh, later we'll read the end of the obituary, which uh, tells why Catherine is here and why she wrote it. She starts out, this is her mother, Mary Ann Teresa Johnson Reddick, born January 4th, 1935, died alone on September 30th, 2013. She is survived by her six of eight children, whom she spent her lifetime torturing in every way possible. While she neglected and abused her small children, she refused to allow anyone else to care or show compassion towards them. When they became adults, she stalked and tortured anyone they dared to love. Well, that's strong stuff, mm -hmm. and I'll just preface it by saying we had abuse in our own family. My brother Rick wrote a powerful poem. He was only nine when our mother died, so he wasn't old enough to write something that powerful, but he wrote a poem called Auschwitz 1962, which is similar in tone and, and uh, mm -hmm. content to your obituary. Mm -hmm. So let's just start, though, with your obituary. Uh, because it's got you some acclaim, uh, some notoriety, some, I'm sure, pros and cons, mm -hmm. a uh, yes. uh, spot on the national show, The View, but of course they are now surpassing that by being on theater for <laughs> ideas. Right. So, uh, uh, <clears throat> but anyway, tell, just take it from there, and I know you had a very rough childhood. Okay. Well, uh, Let's just start with why I wrote the obituary, if that's okay. Um, my brother, when he called me to tell me that our mother, that someone had contacted him, we have not had contact with her for decades. And someone called from the nursing home that she was placed in and saying that um, they thought that they had our mother there and she was gonna be dying very soon. And so he went over there and confirmed that it was her. 
and um, he did not speak with her or anything, but he did call me and tell me that, you know, when, when she died, they called him to let him know. And we decided, okay, what do we do now? And we hadn't had contact with her, so we really were kind of at a loss. But all of our lives, we've wanted to do something. We've been working on changing laws, and we've worked um, doing many things to help kids that have been abused. And so we thought, well, what could we do this time? This is like the end of it for us. Um, so my brother says, well, let's write an obituary. And I went, oh, mm -hmm. I don't want to do it. And he's going, well, I don't want to do it. So <laughs> I said, well, so a couple days later, we decided, okay, I'll do it, but it's got to have a purpose. So the purpose for the obituary was really in the final paragraph of the obituary, which was really to um, make a create a movement about foster care and about child abuse in our country. Well, let me just read that paragraph and introduce uh, my co-host Patty Hunter, who's also instrumental in bringing Catherine here. Many, many chats and phone calls, and uh, so thank you, Patty. Thank you. And uh, she's welcome. done a lot for track and has her own show, Patty's Page. Uh, anyway, here's the last paragraph, which says. Most of us have found peace in helping those who have been exposed to child abuse and hope this message of her final passing, her mother, can revive our message that abusing children is unforgivable, shameless, and should not be tolerated in a humane society. Our greatest wish now is to stimulate a national movement that mandates a purposeful and dedicated war against child abuse in the United States of America. Well um, done. Well yeah, said. well done. Could not say Thank it you. any better than that. And that's Track's mission mm -hmm. to start dialogue, yes. to, to uh, uh, find ways to make a difference. And uh, if you want to continue a little bit, I know you grew up in foster homes pretty right. much, and your mother had a very unusual uh, occupation, so to speak. Yes. Well, it started out with, uh, we were both, we were born in Southern California, and we were in our first foster home when I was six weeks old was when I was in my first foster home. Um, she had a lot of mental, Ill, mental health issues and um, lots of physical abuse from both our father and our mother. They eventually um, separated, and it was just her with us. Um, she ran a house of prostitution out of our house, wherever we lived. She had a red light outside the front door. Wow. And, um, yeah, it was pretty, yeah, everyone, everyone knew it. We were so little, though, we didn't really didn't know realize, it. No, yeah. we didn't realize what it was, except for we would um, listen to her phone conversations. When the phone rang, we had to be absolutely quiet so she could run her business. And um, if it went well, and the conversation went well, when she made an appointment with someone, um, then we were to uh, uh, clean up the house, and these events happened in our house. And she had other people working for her, so it was all the bedrooms in the house yeah. were used. Um, oh, wow. We were to sleep in the kitchen on the floor. And the she children went, slept on the floor in the kitchen right. with all these bedrooms? In yes. The, oh. yeah. So um, they, they took over the house, and um, she would drug my younger siblings and so that they wouldn't make any noise during the night. and She drugged them? Yes. Yeah, she gave them medicine, so sleeping would, medication. Yeah. yeah, so they would what be asleep and not wake up. If they did wake up, we'd have to take them out the back door, which was really a doggy door that we could crawl out if we needed to get to the backyard to use the bathroom <laughs> or so anything. Nice. So it was... You'd use the bathroom and it, the, your backyard was your bathroom? Yes. And oh. you crawled out a doggy door? Right. Yeah. Boy, she's deserving of this. Because we couldn't really, um, there wasn't a way out of, yeah. the, I don't know if she did bolted the, the door at the top or what, yeah. but that was what we used. I don't remember. I was about five at the time, five to six years old. And eventually, um, we were taken away from her. There's tons of abuse between then. By the time I was seven, we were removed permanently. But then we had visitation rights with her. Which um, was? which was extremely difficult and very yeah. abusive as well. Uh, when we did get visitation with her, sometimes she'd take us in the car and we'd move to a different county or we'd move to a different state so that foster social services couldn't find us. And then we'd start the whole routine over again. Right, like just the dead of the night, you'd just pack yes. up and yeah. move? we'd just pack up and move. 
Um, it was it was interesting. Um, she would, for example, we would when we were taken away from her at different times. She would leave us for days, or if she was lucky and got a, a trip to Hawaii with one of these men or, or somewhere, mm. we were to stay by ourselves. And my oldest brother, he's two years older than I, and then I have one older brother. And then there was, was I was the oldest girl. So they were the fathers of the house. I was the mother. And we'd get our wagon together and we'd go around the neighborhood and steal what we could from other people. Mostly we collected Coke bottles. We learned how to break in uh, newspaper stands and mm. get coins out of that, and Coke stands, Coke machines. That was the only way you had And w sense. as we got older, and yeah. this is between seven. Remember, at seven, yeah. I was totally wow. taken away. <clears throat> but yes, we learned and how to do all this stuff. you did this before stuff. age of seven? Before age of seven. And there was a bowling alley down the street from us, and we would go in there, and I was a cute little blonde, little mm. girl, and you mm. know, so I would distract the ladies and my brothers would take their wallets out of their purses. And that was what we used for money at the grocery store. So we got money any way we could. So, yeah. They, they take, these little boys would take wallets out of a mm -hmm. grown woman's right. purse? It, while or like, or like, just the purse, whatever they could grab. Well, yeah, were they was, chased? I mean, did they see them? No, or were what they so we did good? is we snuck out of the bowling oh. alley and then got their money out of their purse and threw it in the dumpster that they had outside. And we we did that. My mother taught us all this stuff. Yeah. It wasn't something we made up. Right. Um, it was something that she taught us how to survive on our own. So it's almost yeah. like normal to you. It was. Because it, she didn't have anything to compare it mm -hmm. to. Did you find her to be an evil woman? Are mentally ill. Eating. I think it was a sense of both. I oh. really, I mean, to me, the evil, the mental health stuff came from her mood swings, which right. I felt oh. what I, we saw all the time. Right. But I think the evilness came when she was demanding sibling abuse, sibling to sibling abuse. Um, that was probably yeah. the most painful. She would, she had one sister who she really, really hated because he was apparently our father's favorite, oh. and she would tie her to the wall like she was. Jesus. Wait, and your sister? Yeah, my sister. Your and sister. make us all hit her and she tell us how what that horrible so things we had right. to say to her. Oh, you know, your how own we hated sister her. Yeah. And her own daughter. Yes. Yeah. And you had eight she had eight children. Mm -hmm. So you were one of eight. Mm -hmm. And the oldest girl. How is everybody yeah. now? How old are they or how, how is are everyone? They? Do you communicate with them? You know, the obituary was, was good in the aspect that one of the sisters uh, that I hadn't spoke to for decades mm. found me on Facebook, right. and we've been communicating ever since. And I'm hoping oh, to get to visit good. her. Um, well, that's a very. She positive. struggled her whole life, just devastating struggles. But she was, I think, the most severely abused by my mother. Oh, my stomach. But she's she's had, but she'll she's getting there. She's working Is on she it. She's help? making progress. Is all and your family getting help? Psychologically, um, we never did when we were kids. Oh, well, I yeah, think yeah. And that was a, a sad thing. I think we yeah. needed to. We, it would have helped us as adults, but as adults, we've we've tried different things, and um, I, I think that we're, we survive and we keep doing better and better. Each each decade seems to be better than the last, good, and more stable than the last. Well, from uh, that tortured childhood. To now, you're mm -hmm. now a, a school principal mm -hmm. with uh, credentials to be a superintendent. And You've come a long way. How children. did you turn it around? <laughs> it was, I call it transformation. It was a slow transformation. And that's one of my, my causes is to try to help kids that are in foster care so that they don't have to start from the ground running and then make all these mistakes and then try to fix. It's hard to fix some of the things you do when you're young. So um, I just, as I got older, I tried things and they didn't work. And I thought I tried marriages, I tried um, mm. different careers, I tried mm. everything, but I always knew I wanted to work with kids. Yes. So, and I always knew I wanted to fix the system. So I started asking, after the children's home we grew up in, mm. uh, we spent there for 10 years. It needed a lot of help. It was a very dysfunctional place. Um, I think the concept was good. They had 70 children here, but they had them in different cottages. So there were 10 children in each household, and there were cottage parents. So the concept was, was good. 
I think what they misplayed, where they were misplaced, was the management of it. Mm -hmm. And as an organizational psychologist now, I see that leadership is everything. If you don't have great leaders and great dreams, and this is at the government level, it's at the state level, and it's at the county level, these and the social services level, um, all the way down to the social workers and the people that work hands-on with the kids. They lead it, and the kids will follow. But the problem is, they had bad cottage parents. They were very uneducated. A lot of them had some criminal backgrounds and continued to be very violent towards the kids. Abusive. Lots of abuse. Yeah. So were I they in it for the money, these people? I don't know that they were in it for the money. Well, how about the However, I do think it was probably the best job they would ever get. And the only job. Because they. Um, mm -hmm. It just was one that they didn't have to do a lot. We did all of the work around the grounds really? and the facilities, and we did all the cleaning. And um, our cottage parent was very military, ah. and everything was white glove treatment with him. Oh and he would go around. If it wasn't spotless, he would tear it all apart and make us do it again. If we didn't get up out of that bed as soon as he went down that hallway and said, lights out, our lights on, you know, whatever. He must he have would been in throw the you out of bed. Yeah. So. But well, he had mixed results. I mean, you lost an infant brother, and, uh, and yes. beaten to death. Yes. And, and and but you had one year in a foster home, which you said was really really good, mm -hmm. and you were crushed right. when you had to leave. That was really devastating. It was a it was in between the children's home and living with our mother. We had a year where um, they had split us up into different locations so we wouldn't run away anymore with our siblings. Mm. And my brothers were put up in Carson City, Nevada with the children's home there. And the younger siblings and I were all put in different foster homes in the Las Vegas area. Wow, and that is tough for a DU. Yeah, yeah. Well, right there is uh, very it must have been damaging. must uh, driven you uh, apart uh, being away from Kind them. of uh, service because when you break up kids, mm -hmm. Yeah. And even though you had a very strange and difficult childhood, in a way, I have found that makes siblings closer mm -hmm. because you, you turn with each other, you right. bond mm -hmm. against this mm -hmm. enemy, which was your right. mother. Right, right. Uh, yes, and that was the way we looked at her. She was our enemy. When we were left alone, we enjoyed that a lot more. We, we were better as a family when she was gone. That seems very un normal, I know, and, and very hard to believe, but we we cared more for each other when she yeah. was out of the household. We looked after her. My siblings were, I was the mother, and mm. so when, when they separated us, there was part of me that was separated and confused exactly. and, and all of that, too. Exactly. So, and this, this loss, it, sense of great sense of loss. I had lost my older brothers, who were my leader, really, and then I had lost my younger siblings who wow. I mothered and nurtured all the way through. And well, where was your father in all of this? He, you know, I have very few memories of him. Uh, the most memories I have were him and he'd show up at our house. Um, him and our mother would have a very volatile uh, relationship. Anything? It would be like violence, cakes flying, pans <laughs> flying, oh, really? words flying, you oh. know, it was just all oh over. So God. we just probably went and hid. And so, and he never came to the children's home to see us. We were there Not 10 once. years, never once. He came, well, I should say that, he came about three months before my 18th birthday. And um, then he left Did in he about three days without ever. To you? No. Is he never. still alive or is he? He has died now, too. I'm yeah, sorry. he's passed on. I'm sorry that your whole family had to go through that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But it's. It's our destiny, I think, that, you know, it takes us where we're supposed to be in life. And I've, it's created a heart for me to go out and try and fix the system. You're no longer mm -hmm. a victim, you're mm -hmm. a survivor. Yes, that's how I and always see myself. tell people, you know, if you can get through this, you're a survivor. Mm -hmm. You can help others. Mm -hmm. we'll go that, through this. Yeah, that is one message mm -hmm. that uh, <coughs> Catherine is an inspirational example that you don't have to be defined mm -hmm. by what mean adults do to you as a child. Mm -hmm. And you basically have two choices. You can kind of get revenge and be your mother and take it out on your mm -hmm. children, or you can do what you're doing, which mm -hmm. is fantastic.
-hmm. which is using this terrible experience mm -hmm. to help others. Right. And my brother has been always very active in CASA, starting CASA in Nevada. Oh. And we've changed some laws in Nevada to terminate parental rights. That was a big issue for us because no matter what our mother did, she was our mother and yeah. the law said she could force us to go home and visit with her. She could force who we could see and who we could not see as children, what we could do and what we what we could not do. And she had absolute control so over our lives. That's even though it, she had control. control. Yeah. And, and even though you were removed when you were sent back to visit, like what, for mm -hmm. a weekend? Yes. It was just like you never left. Every other weekend. Just, mm -hmm. just kept going. So you would be fine before you go see her. And then when you do see her, everything's all screwed up. Yeah. Well, right. you start, I don't think you're ever fine. I think you start to recover from oh, the, recover. the trauma yeah. of being with her. And it takes, yeah. uh, it takes a few days after you've been in that violent situation to calm down again and realize that you don't live in that anymore. And then to reconnect with um, your friends at school. And, and they have the normal life, but you don't. Mm -hmm. But it's so scary to have to go back and forth. And um, stress. What is that called in psychological term uh, when people come f back from war and. Oh, post traumatic stress. Mm -hmm. Is that what you had? Yes. Um, oh, my man. brother and I, everybody at the children's home, when I went back through a lot of our records and everyone they diagnosed with PTSD mm -hmm. back then. And now they, just like they do now with ADHD kids, I think yeah. now that would be the new term. But um, I think, <coughs> realistically, they, they said they diagnosed us with this, but they never gave us any services for Didn't it. Didn't help you. Never there helped no you. Services. I mean, yes. oh, so it was just a t label that went nowhere. Yeah, and I have no idea why, why they would even give us that label yeah. if nobody ever saw us mental as now that I'm it's an like, organizational well, psychologist. I understand Catherine, how the process works, and it doesn't Catherine work that way. Catherine has pneumonia, but we just lie there, and we don't give her anything to help her. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So... You didn't have any medical uh, coverage, did you, as you grew up? Well, yeah, you do. As under state, we were wards of the state, or so we would have been yeah, on Medicaid. Well, when it was your mom? Um, no, no, no. We well, we had many hospital visits while we were with our mother, and emergency room visits. It when during her tantrums, we she'd break noses, she'd <sighs> throw a. a a spatula at my brother and slit his stomach open. Oh my oh, gosh. Mm. Yeah, it was it was pretty violent, but it back then, and they even didn't then, take. They did not. They didn't take arrest her. her. No, that's not because right. parents could make up an excuse of how it happened, and usually mm -hmm. her excuse was it was one of us that did it to the yeah, other yeah. sibling. Uh, they were, were out. They, like they were fools? out playing baseball or oh. or playing with a coke bottle, and she ran around the corner, and her brother hit her with a coke bottle. You know, things like that. So there was always a, an excuse. explanation. Yeah. Well, we and had. They didn't, they didn't investigate any further. They didn't really investigate. And, no. you know, sadly enough, I see that as a principle today. I will turn in the apps. I mean, I, I'm, I'm aware that they're overloaded. Right. So I am really careful and very conscientious about really picking out the most severe cases that I turn in. And I'm still amazed that those kids turn back up in the same home the next day. They come to school from the same home, living with the same people in the household. And it's, it's very surprising. Have you had any of your students land in the hospital or passed away because of this? Oh, gosh. Um, I have seen students be medically um, given medication mm -hmm. that makes them look like and act like zombies. Yeah. Um, that, that is very upsetting and you can't, when you complain about it, they don't do anything about it. So you Physical I like things, to know why they won't do anything about that. Is, are they afraid to touch that topic? I don't know that they're afraid as much as it is lack of information about yeah. it. Uh, I think yeah. that so many social workers and so many people at the leadership level of these places don't understand the dynamics of child abuse. It is absolute, I mean it is, and I want to say it's easy to diagnose child abuse, but in some respects from a child's perspective it's very easy. There are a lot of things that go on that a child, they will show up with, with things on them or their behavior will change drastically. 
uh, their grades will change or they're not at school ever. There's so many things a school can do and they do it. And when I see people dying on TV or little kids and, and the media tends to blame, well, the school failed and they didn't report it. I'm telling you, we report it. Those, we are by law reporting it. We yeah. report on a regular mm -hmm. basis. Right. Sometimes we don't even hear from a social worker. Yeah. You know, we've had kids, um, we've had parents that we know are sexually and physically abusing their kids and we will call and we will write descriptions more graphically the first, the second time than we did the first and no one shows Brilliant. up to see yeah, them. The kids fall through a crack in the, in the floor. Mm -hmm. People just seem, to, well they're little, they don't mean anything or say anything, we don't believe them, mm -hmm. the adult comes first right. and the victims are the well, and I, and I think that also foster kids just like us, our mother yeah. coached us mm -hmm. how to talk when we met with a social worker. What to say, mm -hmm. what not yeah, to say. If it was a police officer, we were to quote the Fifth Amendment. I mean, yeah. you know, so we knew the Fifth Amendment. I refused to answer on the rights on the grounds it may incriminate myself. So and you're a so seven year old little girl. Yeah. So yeah. Kind of I know. Can you imagine? Yeah. I just think, oh my I gosh. I refuse to answer. I would just, and I see these in these little kids that I work with now, and I see kindergartners coming in, and I know they're being abused. Oh. And I'll turn it in. It just there breaks my heart that law, you see them year after year going the law, through this. What we're doing with track, mm -hmm. we are helping scan, mm -hmm. which is called what? Stop child abuse and neglect. Okay, mm -hmm. it is rampant, mm -hmm. no matter where you go. Mm -hmm. Yes, and that's what we get from our caseworkers too. They tell yes. us, well, and then the other issue is it is rampant and there's not enough caseworkers to deal with the overload. Oh, it's okay. so over, the overwhelmed. They are totally itself. overwhelmed with child abuse. And I'm talking about not just phony calls, I'm talking about mm -hmm. serious, they are overwhelmed. And the social workers, the turnover is so high there. That right. I'll see three different yeah. social workers for the same child within months, and they the first social worker will tell me one thing, the second one will come yeah, in, yeah. and well, I didn't know that happened, and there's no there's no cross checking of the files. The whole and I'll system say, well, has to be correct. Yes, yes. Because that that makes you mad, doesn't it? It makes it breaks my heart. Breaks it does heart. make me angry, but it just turns my stomach. That it just breaks my heart that. I see generation after generation. And it and doesn't stop. It shouldn't continue. be that way. This is yeah. now the third generation that I've seen, and the, everything's very much the same as it was 50 years ago. Yes, it's just as you say, shameless. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. speaking of the system, we had a very uh, <coughs> stimulating discussion yesterday with our prosecutor mm -hmm. here in Allen County, Karen Richards, mm -hmm. and I thank her for taking time out of her busy schedule. She wanted mm -hmm. to meet that was you. Very nice meeting She's with her. an advocate for, uh, there she is, Karen's in the white there, yes. but next yeah. to you, then me, then Patty. Mm -hmm. uh, I've known Karen a long time, and she's an advocate for uh, children, and uh, brought up a lot of interesting points. One is, uh, we talked about caseworkers not even having sufficient training, really, mm -hmm. of not, not looking at the entire child. Uh, the, their spiritual needs or physical needs are pretty obvious mm -hmm. if they're being beaten. Mm -hmm. uh, and she was interested in one thing you said about, and you mentioned earlier about uh, supervised visitations. You mm -hmm. know, when you said you were, went back to your mother it took you three, four days to recover right. from going back to your mother. So mm -hmm. they were making you do something that was definitely bad for the mm -hmm. child. Mm -hmm. And right. she just continued mm -hmm. the abuse. And Karen pointed out the thinking now pretty much is to go with supervised visitations mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. Or when I say supervised, I guess yours weren't supervised, you just were, were yeah, there with we your mother. There. Yeah. Supervised, when I worked at SCAN, mm -hmm. the foster parents who had the child because it was removed by welfare mm -hmm. caseworkers, uh, would bring the child to SCAN mm -hmm. and then the parents would be there. Mm -hmm. They would go into a room mm -hmm. and I as the know-it-all, consumer or whatever, would sit and look through a window. Mm -hmm. I could see them, they couldn't see me. Mm -hmm. It was an odd uh, situation. Mm -hmm. I don't know if they still do it that way, but that was supervised visitation. Mm -hmm. 
and of course it was somewhat artificial because a parent yeah. knows they're being watched uh -huh. and uh, right. and the kids are all tensed up. Pardon? The kids are tensed up because they the kids are you know yeah. it varied. Sometimes uh -huh. they look very natural and sometimes uh -huh. they look uh -huh. like it was a scared uh -huh. a performance right. on both yeah. it, both parts. Uh -huh. You know Definitely. the kid would not. No, I it's can't say definitely anything. Definitely not a natural yeah. environment. It's not a natural environment, mm -hmm. and I know that you're not a big fan of of uh, foster care or foster homes. So there's got to be other answers. Not that some foster parents don't do terrific jobs, mm -hmm. but we're talking about an across the board problem because mm -hmm. if you don't do a good job, there's hardly any accountability in right. there. Yeah. Till the kid, I right. mean, you know, 16 month old infant beaten to death. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that's my issue with foster homes is they, there are some wonderful foster homes, and I was blessed with experiencing one of them. Unfortunately, it was only for a year. And, um, but during that time, as you mentioned, my 16 month old brother, the youngest two the siblings were put in a different foster home, and this foster home had a record of lots of complaints about it from the neighbors. Lots of the kids that were there were telling the social workers the abuse they were receiving and, and nobody done. believed them. So their response to that was to put smaller children with this family. Well, as the result was that the ac accusations were correct mm -hmm. and my brother was beat to death in the foster home that these people were in. Of course, they took their mm -hmm. license away but that was it. They, they weren't sent they to were jail. They were never sent to jail. They were. And um, oh my gosh. The, because on the um, on the autopsy, it said it described the the brain damage and and all of the the trauma to the head, but it said caused in an unknown manner. Yeah, right. But then when you look at the medical examiner's mm. report, I showed it to my pediatrician when I had my own children. He looked at the first couple pages. And he says this baby was beat to death because you, there were lots of other broken bones from oh. previous stuff. There were bruises all oh. over him. There was, what year was starvation. That? This was 1963. So. And but the problem with foster homes today is that, and this is why I call them our hidden children, is we don't even know where these kids are. We mm -hmm. don't know what they're getting, what services they're getting or not getting. You and I aren't exposed to who's a foster child and who isn't. I am as a principal of a school, you but that? that's it. And mm -hmm. even at that, um, we don't have a lot of communication with you know, social services about the children or what their needs are. It's all hidden under confidentiality things. and. You know, we don't need them to be isolated. We need them to know what they need, and we need the medical, making sure that they're getting medical services, and not just by a doctor who's going to medicate them, and just to keep them quiet all the time. That's yeah. not really helping them. No, what do you isn't. think of uh, community helping each other out instead of isolating themselves from others? Um, I think the community could do a lot to, a lot to help. I think yes. we have to, Be as a community, aware. we have to put demands on the system that says we don't need to know all the kids, but we need to know these kids are taken care of. We need to know like how many there, there are. Where are these kids? Can yeah. make them accountable. We don't need to know that they're in this home or that home as much as we need to know that the system knows where the kids are. When was the last time someone did a visit on these children? When was the last time that um, we received, they received medical care? Oh, yeah. Or when, who's monitoring their medication levels to make sure that they're appropriate and they're not going to do more physical damage to the child? Because these are children. Their bodies are still developing. When you medicate a child with all kinds of medication, it can do long-term damage on their kidneys and their liver and oh, all absolutely. kinds of things, not they only their psyche. Have like a neighborhood watch in the neighborhood. If anyone is hurting their child, yes, they should be reported and something done. Those about are tricky it. though too and because you can you use that. Tell. You can use that to get revenge on yes. somebody you don't mm -hmm. like yeah, and but say, you have to have "Oh, proof. I saw this guy do this," and mm -hmm. it's something very simple so and we'll exaggerated. I know it's 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 difficult, 
I'm not saying neighbors shouldn't report when they see uh, abuse. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying you got to be careful with things like neighborhood yeah. watches. And I think there's a there's a clear line between discipline and child abuse. Right. For me, there's a very clear line. For a lot of people, it's not so clear. So. I mean, they, I, they, they, I they understand that you spank your child. That, to right. me, that is discipline. That is not abuse. But to have your children with bruises all over them all the time and saying horrible things to them and, and hospital visits and um, abuse against each other, all those things, leaving them alone at small ages. And, of course, the sexual abuse is pretty easy to prove. So that one is one that... Medically, they can they can now who did it. That's always the big thing, and the child is is and they don't believe the child. To tell. They don't believe the child when he when he can communicate because they think oh it's a child. They don't. Yeah, some like I know as as children growing to. up in the children's home yeah. when when we were reporting anything, they told us we were liars or. Um, sent us off to oh threatened God. us to send us to like a children's prison. That's what they called them back then, um, which was an escalate. It was truly a prison where they held juvenile delinquents, and, uh, and so that was our threat to and be quiet, and not ever say anything. And children are almost by definition voiceless, uh, defenseless, mm -hmm. helpless. Mm -hmm. uh, you don't have a way to uh, escape really, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. like from your home. Mm -hmm. You're stuck there, and then you go to a foster home, and then it's hit or miss. That's what right. you're saying. Mm -hmm. You might mm -hmm. get a good one. Yeah. You might get a terrible one. Yeah. And But there's nobody watching to see, well, That's this is right. a bad one, this is a good one. Because we need a system that will check into anything just to make sure, but don't drag anyone away unless right. there is really something going down. Yeah, I think there's significant evidence, yeah. and if they have significant evidence of child abuse, and it's it's history. I mean, yeah. I can tell you if someone's being abused. Let me watch them for about three months, right. and I will know whether they're being abused or not. There are so many yeah. ways to detect it. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. I'm not saying now, if I, have, if I have a child, and this is the way I look at it as a principal, if I have a child that shows up at school that has been physically abused, um, either by burn and they can't explain it, they say, my mom and dad won't let me talk about it, or um, a child with a slap face, a hand slap bruise on their face, or some a black eye, right. and, and they'll come up with, usually the parent, this is how a lot of it works, the parent will come in and make an excuse why that child has that. But if, you, if the child will tell something else, and they you don't even know. have to ask the child. The child will be telling his friends, or, or the teacher might have told the teacher might have told, um, or the parent might have told the teacher, but the teacher didn't tell me. So I'll I notice it. I'll see a child. What happened to your face, Joey? What'd you do? Fall down? And then he'll say, No, my dad hit me, or this yeah. mark is because my dad was mad because I didn't get a um, my report card good or something. So. And those are the things that, you know, you know what's happening. When there's a bruise on a kid's, a hand slap yeah. on a kid's face and he's a kindergartner or a first grader or someone young like that, you know and, it. And, and, and when they're sexually abused, mm -hmm. they're withdrawn, uh, what are the symptoms you can be Actually, with? you would, sometimes it's withdrawing. Sometimes they're just very shy. They don't want to talk to But anyone. a lot of times it's anger. Mm -hmm. Just so huge out? amounts of anger. and. Mm -hmm. Things that, or a lot of people, and this is another thing, they tend to diagnose them with other things like emotional disorders or behavioral yeah. disorders, when really the child is lashing out because it, that's their only response to it. And so I'd like to see more direction when you see a child behaving like that. And self wounds, they'll, they'll cut on themselves. That's uh, a very, cutting. very, yeah, cutting yeah, on themselves, yeah, especially with the older kids. You know, you can usually tell when a child is being exactly. either sexually abused or physically abused when there's a lot of self-hatred. There is a commercial, I won't say who it is, but uh, they said, uh, we, we, we can control our children if they get out of hand. There's this, uh, this woman who says she's a counselor. Mm -hmm. And she said, if your child gets out of hand in that, you know, we'll help you get him back to the straight and narrow and all mm -hmm. that. I said, mm -hmm. that's not right either. 
Yeah. How can you help well, a child? I think discipline is important, and I it think is. Oh, yeah. part of the and and this is one thing that I went through as an as a mother, going after after I experienced it. Right. I went the opposite way. I thought I'm going to make my child my friend, and this is one thing I see now in education. It's a fatal error, right. and I made it because when I had a child young, I wanted this child to have everything, and I did not discipline mm. correctly. I mm. did not well, ever not hit her. her. I didn't ever hit her, right. but I didn't discipline her, and I didn't nurture her. I wanted her to love me, and I wanted her to be my friend, and so. Uh, you know that created a lot of problems for her. You know, that since then sense. I've you know I've been educated and yeah. I, I understand child development. I understand the balance and the yeah. need for discipline. So, but I think a lot of parents who grow up in the foster care system or in child abuse go one way or the other. They swing to just That's the true. same instinctive behaviors, and they are instinctive. So it They're goes from generation behaviors. to generation that they don't um, get help. Well, if they don't get help or they don't figure it out, I right. was I was able to figure it out without help because of my education. Right. I when I had the opportunity to go back to school and I said I really want to go back to school, I went for human development and family studies. And it just opened a door of windows for me. It was like all over the place going, Oh, yes, I get it now, I get it now. I wish I had known this. Okay, now what do I do with it? And just kept going but, but and going with Did you go to education. elementary, high school uh, when you were struggling with all these things we've been talking about? With the normal population, yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. And some of that was pleasant and some of it was not. I think the older you got, um, when I was a young girl, um, it was really difficult with our mother because we, I was real, real young. I think my brother was in first grade and my other brother was in kindergarten. They never went to school. But when they did go to school, um, if, they, if, the, if the teacher said anything or reported child abuse, our mother would have us spray paint their car. She uh -oh. would get cans of spray oh paint. Gosh. Or she revenge. would have us put sugar in their gas tank. Huh. Or if she knew oh. where they lived, yeah, she was she was brutal. Vengeance. She and she taught us to be apparent. little criminals. We were really criminals, and mm. it was you know it's a sad way to grow up. And you know I wish you had that picture because you could see yeah, these little kids. Yeah, I was going to say like, that uh, I think that's typical too of abusers yeah. that you put on a happy face mm -hmm. for the public, like right. the picture you're referring to mm -hmm. is Santa Claus with you and your siblings, mm -hmm. and you know oh what a happy family. Right. You know, yeah. probably made to smile even if mm -hmm. you didn't feel like it, mm -hmm. and then the public said, "Oh, what a nice family!" Yes. And then, yeah. and, but behind that picture, mm -hmm. you're getting uh, yeah. sugar and gas tanks, mm -hmm. uh, pleading the Fifth Amendment, right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. stealing purses. Wow. You know, yeah. people who, um, who are care t not caretakers but case workers, whatever. Uh -huh. Case workers. Are they uh -huh. screened? Oh yes, they are, and they have bachelor's degrees and. And I don't think, I really it's think they try their very best. Yes, but they're, they're not uh, hands-on. They're not uh, connected spiritually with the children. They right, get, they but burn they're out. case numbers. They yeah. burn they out because they can't handle the pressure of what's going on with the kids. Part of that in their defense is, as Catherine said, they have so many cases they can't get emotionally involved. Right. But, but they have to psychologically understand the child. I think they have to be, you know, and to the, what you just said and what you're saying, <clears throat> I think it's important that they become emotionally involved. Yes. Um, because if they don't, they become, the kids become case St numbers. Statistics. And, and I've seen that when I was doing some grant writing where whenever someone referred to their foster children, they referred to them as number of beds. And it just That's broke my right. heart. We should not no, refer no. to our kids. These are our babies. These are our children. These are our future. They're not beds, they're not objects, exactly. and they're not numbers. And until we get rid of that type of thinking in the system, we are just moving through building future prisoners in our society, well, you know future generations of Can I, can I yes, say sir. something? I noticed that when people one-on-one -on -one in a newspaper, they get built up, people give money to them if they need it or something like that. But when you go see a whole country either starving or uh, in war, you're not as emotionally involved because it's a whole mass mm -hmm. that overwhelms mm -hmm. you. Mm -hmm. Is that what it is? And I really think that's probably very true. It's I think a lot of people 
uh, want to do something, but it's so huge, it's so enormous, they so don't they know what to do. Whole new so that's why I'm trying to go around to communities yeah. like this and yeah. start small. Just make it happen in your community. And, and Show pieces okay. and build it, yeah. and then exactly. we go to the and legislature, and then we get all the politicians yeah. involved. But if we don't get the the basic. If we don't get the people to stand up and force our politicians to fight exactly. some other war. Because our war right now should be on our children. Yes, We should. should be protecting our children. I mean, I know there's a lot of countries um, in all kinds of chaos, but, you know, what are we doing to our, our country, very own children? If we don't take care children? of this country, will fall from mm -hmm. within. Really. We spend uh, lots and lots of money on our prisoners, but we don't spend near biggest, that much money on our foster kids. The biggest prison population in the world. In yeah. the world. Mm -hmm. And it's going to continue to world. get worse if we don't fix the way we teach our children. Be because way we teach it's turned into a profit-making so, uh, business, mm -hmm. it's, and so it's, they need yeah, customers. You're going to see trivial things criminalized because that gets more customers for the prisoner, prisons. Well, Child I hope not because it's our tax of dollars, and we're wasting our know, tax we're dollars. Wasting we're them. We need to move them in another direction and be more proactive. I yeah. mean, my Oops. experience mm. of being abused and working at SCAN, uh, when I started track, I didn't really want, I'm not opposed to working with the system, but of giving people a platform and opportunity mm -hmm. that you just said, I can make a difference. Mm -hmm. You know, you go down, we have some kids, and you have a story to tell. It doesn't have to be dramatic like mm -hmm. yours, mm -hmm. uh, but you have a story, some trip you took, or mm -hmm. uh, something you did with your child mm -hmm. that worked or didn't work, mm -hmm. or. Uh, you know, you just identify and relate with kids, and mm -hmm. I think that empowers them because they feel like, wow, somebody cares ab enough mm -hmm. about me to come here and talk to me. Right. That's right. it. Yeah. That's it. It's That's not right. that complicated in, yeah. a, in a sense. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's still a need for all the social agencies and all that, but that's the whole idea of track and, and uh, of using art because anybody can be an artist. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't have to be right. Picasso, yeah. you don't have yeah. to be uh, Mark Twain. And that's what I like about track and what you guys do, is that you give options to the kids. What's the, where's their outlet? Uh, the outlet has to be outside of themselves, and, and it can be inside. Like when I did some writing about my life, that really helped me a lot. Yeah. yeah. But that was, you've got to have a, a like way therapy. out of it to, yes, it they is. And so whether it's art or dance or whatever. Exactly. It gives keeping them a journal. focus. Talking to journal, people, I think talking is an Learning skills art. to give them yeah, exactly. something to hope for. I and mean, having exactly. so many things. Health, mental health people, mm -hmm. counselors, there, when they do start, <laughs> when they do start to come out of themselves, mm -hmm. so to speak, mm -hmm. instead of holding themselves within. And that is when they need the counselors. Mm -hmm. We need more counselors yeah. helping the kids. But also an important aspect of my philosophy, I think, of track is that kid, it's driven by kids. I want it driven mm -hmm. by kids. Mm -hmm. Like you're talking about the children's home. They call you a liar. Mm -hmm. I want something where kids get input. Kids mm -hmm. give you ideas. Mm -hmm. Kids mm -hmm. say, mm -hmm. wow, this happened to me at home. Don't do this. Mm -hmm. Or, or uh, mm -hmm. you know, I like this yeah. part of it. And so we're, we're too, uh, we don't give children enough uh, respect, really, for their intelligence. I mean, look what you did. Yeah, it was criminal, but my gosh, <laughs> it was amazing. It was amazing that I we mean, could flip do that it. around, yes. and you could have been, mm -hmm. you know, giving classes at track. I mm -hmm. mean, if you can do all that stuff you were doing. Kids are, uh, like you say, they're too much of a commodity. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like, uh, in the old days, they said, Kids are to be seen, not heard. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's where that's that a statement attitude. our mother made to us yeah. quite often. Seen, not you know, heard. But we my have child, to I'll that. kill him if I want to. She would uh, say to oh somebody my who, gosh. yeah, who, if somebody interfered when we were at the store or out in public, um, they said, "My children are well." She used a lot of explicitives I can't use here, but um, I'll kill him if I want to. And you know, well, she was yeah. She, well, that's just the way we thought of our children back then. And we still do, uh, We have to re we still educate. Have still. Yeah. We educate. And that's we have we to get passionate about it. Passionate, yeah. Mm -hmm. That was, uh, you know, we did a show, a uh, previous show before you came, was about my brother who was a musician, and we had mm -hmm. some very talented, uh, wonderful 
local musicians cover songs he wrote and performed. It was beautiful. I'll give you a copy of it. But it reminds me that one of the singers, our friend Michael Patterson, who runs a, a newspaper, weekly newspaper, Frost he doesn't Illustrated. Run it. He, he doesn't works. run it, but he's the editor. <coughs> and uh, <coughs> anyway, he was pointing out that uh, part of the problem is, is that with the, the agencies, it's a job. Uh -huh. And to some, uh, you know, a job they take very seriously, you know, like anybody, some people are good. Uh -huh. Anyway, but he uh -huh. said, Patty and I have passion. Uh -huh. So uh -huh. whatever else we lack, we do have yeah. passion yeah. to help uh -huh. kids, you know. Uh -huh. I, I yeah. mean, we've all kids. Yeah. And uh, her friend John Two Hawks, mine now too, and, uh, you know, we were listening to his CD in the car. <laughs> and the talk he gave that we, we, we attended, he was pointing out that we're all children. Mm -hmm. You don't stop being a child. Mm -hmm. you, and that, that we shouldn't stop being yeah. a child. Child mm -hmm. is, if, if the child is healthy, there's a wonderment to childhood, mm -hmm. a curiosity, mm -hmm. uh, wanting to soak things up. Right. Yeah. And that's what you have to uh, uh, promote mm -hmm. in a child. Mm -hmm. And this notion that Child, adult, mm -hmm. still know. the same soul. Mm -hmm. Still yeah, feels same the same soul, yeah. right? No yeah, matter how so young or old. Let's yeah. just. Uh, I think we got about ten minutes. Less. What uh, you know, we talked about reunification. That's not always working. That's right. that's where you go back to the family, mm -hmm. uh, as opposed to supervised visitation, which the means to an end to go back to the family. There's a myth that the family, the natural parents, are always better, mm -hmm. almost always better. Mm -hmm. uh, and I can understand, you know, as a parent, parent now, I'd feel terrible if my child mm -hmm. got taken away mm -hmm. and I'd work everything right. I could to get her back. Mm -hmm. But also, at the same time, if the parent is abusing them, like in your case, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. uh, why send you back even for a visit? Make right. her earn mm -hmm. that visit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. See, it's, a, it's giving the adult all the uh, rights and mm -hmm. not, not mm -hmm. the kid. Right. Yeah. But in, in just closing, why, uh, I know you were quoted as saying, America doesn't do everything it can do. Uh, mm -hmm. the America's hidden children, mm -hmm. would you say 400,000 kids in wow. foster care? And I believe there's, yeah. uh, a million, I'm not going to quote numbers, but there's a lot of kids going hungry, mm -hmm. sleeping mm -hmm. on the street, mm -hmm. homeless. What goes on in America as, as us, as Americans, that we have these problems. We're so wealthy. Mm -hmm. We have so much mm -hmm. money. You cannot say it's money. I'm sick of this. Mm -hmm. There's no money mm -hmm. for caseworkers. Mm -hmm. There's $25 million to pay a guy to shoot a basket through a ball. Mm -hmm. I mean, through a ball, through a basket, excuse me. <laughs> See, that's why I'm not yeah. a basketball player. I didn't even get the that's concept right. right. But right. Uh, Well, and I get that, and, I, and, and that's what's so painful for me is I don't understand. It's, it's so hard to sit a, see all the money we spend sending our young military men yeah, off military. to another country. We need it here. For, need for what? Here ever cause they, they feel like is justified at the time when I'm seeing generation after generation of our children being slaughtered well, and abused by our own, own society. society and it's like if we don't get serious about this it doesn't matter to me I mean I'm sorry but this is our country and this is what our founding fathers want they would never have stood for this to happen to our children. Well, another so picture that, that I really liked uh, that you used, uh, Catherine gave a talk in the Kindleville Library, mm. and she'll, she's giving okay. one in the Fort Wayne Library and, and other things too while she's here. So we're thrilled about that because that's mm -hmm. part of making an impact. Mm -hmm. And Catherine is so personable and so uh, uh, nice and, and uh, insightful Thank that, you. you know, you're a great, the crusader for, for this cause. But the other picture, that I liked all of them that you showed, but one at the end where you had the military picture and then said, are they fighting just for rich people? Or what about all these abused kids? Right, That's right. not exactly what it I know said, they don't sacrifice their life and for 
just the wealthy. It's not for Wall Street. They don't go to it's the a, military a and they don't say, I'm fighting for my country just for the rich. They are fighting for every one of these children Freedom. too. And we need to s yeah. respect but, that. But even those soldiers, in a sense, are abused. They get paid very little and the people who back. send them reap big profits mm -hmm. from mm -hmm. war. Mm -hmm. So there's yeah. a, a kind of across the board sense of exploitation and and uh, well I'm human nature is like that isn't it mm -hmm. good bad in between yes yes and if you give but them the right environment mm -hmm. then they'll fester yeah well and a lot of it is power really mm -hmm. I mean it's something that <coughs> people rarely talk about and when you have mm -hmm. all these discussions but the caseworker or the people in the foster care mm -hmm. children's home, they have power over you. Mm -hmm. yeah. They have power mm -hmm. over you. That's a natural And we know that for most of us, power is a kind of an, a drug, and it doesn't make people better, generally. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Generally. On the other hand, there has to be, as you say, discipline mm -hmm. and, and somebody mm -hmm. in charge mm -hmm. and uh, not letting children run wild. Mm -hmm. That's not the mm -hmm. answer either. What do you think of this human race? that we have here on earth, that they're abusive, oh, I think that there's love and compassion. I think the good, we've got to focus on the good. I know that if our society knew this was happening with kids, they would do something about it. I don't think that you or I or the aware. majority of people would ever tolerate this for their own child. And if we start looking at these babies and these children, as if that was your child. If something happened to you, what would you want to happen for your child? Well, and, exactly. You know, would kind you of put your kid in the child foster care system for all these nights? years? All these years are conditioned not to say anything about it. We have to educate them, reintroduce compassion back into our society. We have to not be afraid of it. Not and be we're afraid. so afraid of making a mistake the other way that we've gone so far. With yeah. we're, we're letting these kids be damaged for life. And that's not right. Yeah. We have about two minutes left. Mm -hmm. Well, I just want to read this. I wrote, uh, this is Frost Illustrated uh, article. Uh, let's hold it up here. But anyway, this is what Michael Patterson's the editor. And I wrote an article for it. And I just want to read a quote that I opened with. There is a battle of two wolves inside us all. One is evil. It is anger, jealousy, greed, resentment, lies, inferiority, and ego, all of which I can recognize in myself. Every human has uh, The other is good. It is joy, peace, love, hope, humility, kindness, empathy, and truth. The wolf that wins, the one you feed. It's a Cherokee proverb. Mm -hmm. um, but to me, that sums up what track mm -hmm. is about, what you're mm -hmm. about. Yeah. You try yeah. to find the best in people, mm -hmm. emphasize that, and give them a way to uh, utilize that, right. that good part of their yes. nature. And I think we all have to recognize, so we don't have this superiority feeling to people who abuse. Mm -hmm. Now, it isn't like I don't feel superior to mother, and I'd say I would never do that. But I can't say some of those things mm -hmm. I would never mm -hmm. do if, I, if the situation mm -hmm. or circumstances mm -hmm. were right. So we have to be aware of our own nature and honest about it. Mm -hmm. And uh, anyway, we've got a minute left. Uh, let's give you the last word, Dr. Reddy. Oh. Well, thank you for allowing me to speak about this and come to your community, which is such a beautiful community. Thank you. And I just appreciate all you guys do. And I wish track the very, very best and most success and I'd love to come back sometime yes. and hopefully we'll share more oh, and we'll start building from here. We can that work, it, it, you know, yeah. together if you're not here. But when you are here, we can do a lot. Right. And my lot. plea for people, whoever watched this, just go to sleep tonight and think about it. Yeah. Email me. You have my email address. And right. you can always go through you at track. And let's start a movement. I, we've got yes, to fix it. this. So Let's I'm make something thank happen Thank you here. for sharing the interest with me. Thank well, you. Catherine, thank you. Thank you so really. much. Really. And Patty, thank Patty. you. Oh, thank yes. you, doll. Thank you for everything. Thank you for coming.
And if you want to contact Catherine, we've got uh, addresses on the screen. And uh, we'll be glad if you contact us to send it to Catherine. And your email's on there as well. Just okay, CatherineReady.com. That's it. Thank you. Okay, bye bye. Mama may have, and Papa may have, but God bless the child who's got his own, who's got his own.